How did 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 you just see me turning on the stream? So I was streaming already before I turned it on. This is good to know. And now I'm experiencing a voice delay, a sound delay, but I got it under control immediately. Kiddos, you are listening to our fellow Magi, Herr Logi, playing his crazy punk bass. Let's get this started. Magic. Like and subscribe. Yeah, what is it that I see? What do I see? Huh? What do I see? That's right. I see you. I see you. Look at this beautiful eye. Can this eye lie? <laughs> Today we're going to take a close look at the very, very important secret of the art of staging tricks and illusions. And the eye is watching because you know what they say. Sometimes the closer you look, the less you see. <laughs> hey, hey, what's up everybody? Hope you are in a good mood, because I am. You know, it is summertime in the city of Berlin, and we're listening to pretty dope uh, punk music by one of our fellow members of the community. Herr Logi, who happened to share his, uh, his music uh, on our Discord channel, and I just, I just uh, asked him a few minutes ago if I could open it up today with this. And I bought this in a corner store, just... Um, couple of hours ago because I've reached a time and age where I can't read something like this anymore so I'm going to be in the grocery stores the other day and I'm going to just you know read carefully the ingredients of the food I'm buying because you cannot be um, uh, careful enough these days can you what's up everybody I see a lot of a lot of uh, uh, funk time as uh, as we say now on YouTube, <laughs> it's going on in the chat, kiddos. That's amazing. Everybody tuning in, welcome to the show. Welcome to yet another live stream on my very channel, on our channel, so to say, because without you, nothing of this would, go, would be going down right. And we are back for another Card Magic Live Jam session on the basis of the book Expert Card Technique by Jean Hugard and Frederick Prey, Close Up Table Magic. And today we're going to dive deep into the chapter called Misdirection. A very important topic. And I brought a little meme with me um, to, um, to display exactly what this is all about. Check it out. Don't miss it. Don't take your eyes off the spoon. Oh, there it goes. Look there. <laughs> That's right. We're talking about misdirection today, guys, and I believe it's going to be a super rich session. Uh, look at that. This is me uh, quadrupled. Didn't want to go to this uh, screen. I want to go here, right here. Um, I'm planning to um, to uh, to stay pretty close to what we read in the book here, but of course also to um, share some of my thoughts and dear beliefs on the topic with you and. I haven't said this for quite a while now, but all of what you're hearing today, please take this just as an inspiration, just as an input for your own thought process, right? Because misdirection is a wide topic and it's a very dear one to many magicians and everybody has got to say something about it and some opinions are, uh, are, are very strong uh, and I, I don't want to, you know, uh, get uh, into the line of fire, you know? At some point so all i'm saying is just you know me trying to make um make the best get the best out of what who got embroy shared with us back in the 40s of the last century so i'm just checking out what you guys are writing in the uh, comments here for a moment and this food. is just what i'm oh, doing all the time 
misdirection. So we, we got here. Everybody's saying hello. Let's see who's in the house. We got uh, Vid van Wit, Crazy Challengers, Chi Rob, Card Magic 55, Colin Grosskamp, um, Herr Logi, uh, Michel Svoboda, um, Knights, Strike Him Rise back in the house. Um, and 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 Ruski Nelson, guys, awesome! You are tuning in. So, I am. Uh, I'm not sure if you still listen to this background music. Pretty pretty loud, maybe. I still got this so uh, so dope on my ears. Nice nice work, um, Hello Logi. Nice nice music. Love it very much. You sent a message on your Facebook page. Just wanted to let you know your channel saved my life. Your lesson helped me using magic to recover from a 10-year addiction. I'm clean now and uh, own a house. Thank you so much. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? You're not making fun with things like that, okay? But in case this is true, you're very welcome. I do what I can. Trevor uh, Schuldiner says, what's up? What's up? Okay, guys. Um, I am, I'm quite, um, I'm quite overwhelmed with my preparations of, uh, of today's session. Um, and I was quite, um, how you say, surprised about the approach by Hugard and Bray on the very topic misdirection. Now, um, it all, you know, it all starts here at the very beginning of the book, of the chapter, I mean, where they um, write the present, uh, the present sleight of hand with cards most eff effectively, it is essential to, uh, sorry, to present, to present sleight of hand with cards most, most effectively, it is essential that the technique of manipulation should be complemented by an understanding of the laws of human interest and a knowledge of the manner in which they can be best put to use by the conjurer. Human interest. Human interest. Look, if I um, looked it up on my favorite uh, translator um, on a website, it's called Lingue. By the way, if you don't know Lingue, just a little shout out here to the project. Uh, don't where is this? Uh, there. This is Lingue. Um, it translates English to German, English to other languages, other languages to other languages, and it works pretty, pretty well. Um, a, cl a close friend of mine uh, is working pretty much from the beginning on this project um, with a bunch of uh, really good um, programmers. So this is, if you need, if you need some, something to translate, uh, this is really good. It's no uh, advertisement deal or something. It's just uh, what I use all the time. So when I when I typed in um, human interest, um, um, I just got what I was expected. You know, um, pretty much the uh, translation, um, menschliches Interesse. And um, this is a really really um, unspecific term. You know, human interest is uh, 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 you know it, it it covers a lot. Right, because um, humans are a super, uh, a super. How do you say this? Um, uh, uh, let, let's use this here. No, curious, inquisitive, prying, nosy, snoopy. Um, so I was, uh, I was trying to, with with my understanding or with my experience. Um, in the art form of stage and tricks and illusions with my thoughts I already I already had when I um, opened up this chapter I tried to give this a, uh, um, a more modern um, uh, uh, um, interpretation and I, I came up with uh, behavioral patterns psychological drives and cognitive capacities that's right it's a little bit like magic, uh, magic um, hacking the code, the workings of the human brain in order, of course, to create illusions. Uh, this is, of course, a quite scientific approach. And, of course, it is, you know. Everything going down here today, of course, mainly in theory. And the practical aspect uh, is quite a different story respectively to um to 
gain an understanding of what misdirection is, uh, how it feels and how it's used, you just gotta go out there and give it a try. Um, lucky us, today we have a rich, um, rich material, a lot of sources we can uh, go to um, to create our own routines, tricks, uh, uh, um, techniques, methods uh, we can choose from in order to to build something that works for us. But nonetheless, we got to go out there right, and give it a try. And this chapter, how, how the, the insights who got Embrue giving us here in this uh, in, in this book, however, do help a lot. Uh, uh, Ruski Nelson says, sorry, didn't mean to offend you. Your channel really didn't help me recover, but uh, I'm ready for the lesson. Misdirection time. No, no, you didn't offend, you didn't offend me. It's, everything's, everything's great. Um, I'm, I'm glad if you say, if you say how, how it is, uh, what you experience, it's great. It's, it's great, you know. I love it. Um, anyway. We gotta, we gotta start with a hard pill to swallow. Hard pill to swallow. Wait, what, what, what's happening here? There we go. I wrote this here, and I wanna, I wanna start with this kind of the manner they receive, respectively, perceived reality. Human beings are pretty much alike. We are, uh, we are all much more vulnerable to deception than we want to admit. Right, so. We now learn to um, use certain techniques in order to create illusions that are basically working on every human being. And um, that is something um, kind of precious, kind of very um, interesting, very something curious to me. Um, chose how, how much we are all alike and um, how much this uh, thing in, inside of skull is kind of, you know, wired by evolution, so to say. And we're kind of hacking it. And the thing is that Hugat and Bruet really break it down on a very fundamental basis. <laughs> because they are excluding from their little um, essay everything else but misdirection in the uh, most basic sense you would ex uh, expect it to be uh, that is pointing the direction of someone um, uh, the attention of someone into a direction and thereby shutting his perception down to another field where are you usually or where the magician usually is doing the dirty work you know changing the cards, switching the deck, um, faking the signature, <laughs> whatever. So, with, uh, the, the, with the great philosopher and father of the Enlightenment, Voltaire, they uh, get started by defining the subject. Misdirection is arousing the absorbed interest of an audience in some object or person away from the conjurer during those moments in which the secret slide or subterfuge is made, thus making possible its undetected execution. This, its undetected execution. The term misdirection, as used in this article, refers solely to the diversion of attention away from the performer in order to make possible the secret execution of a slide or the use of a subterfuge. And this is misdirection. Now, quite honestly, um, I was kind of disappointed when I read this. It's like, really? Because there is so much more to it. And um, we pretty much, we pretty soon learn here everything who got Embroy are excluding, where do I have it? How do they call it? I believe they call it mental uh, misdirection. Let me see. Oh yeah, it's right here on the... Um, the other devices used by the magician, the so-called mental misdirection, 
feats based on the element on, of conf confusing uh, of the spectator's mind or by deception of the senses, diversions created solely through the use of speech, the deception of an audience by using it to make an incorrect inference, all these, which are often called misdirection, are not within the scope of this article. So and the uh, the thing is that from from my from my point of view, what I what I uh, believe it's this is just a, a methodological approach, like to break it down. And the reason for it is really to get the focus on um, on on this very specific um, um, use, bringing a drive into the into the perception of your onlookers to just not look or to look away from where you want them to uh, look away from, right? But when you think about it, it's really hard to separate from all these other aspects um, who got and Brewer mentioned here in this short article. Because it kind of fa all falls together in the mind of the spectators. And this is what I just want to point out at the very beginning before I, um, I, I go into your um, uh, feedback and see what you got to say about this uh, topic. And pre please feel free to share your thoughts, your ideas with us here today because really it's an open and wide field and there's a lot to say about this. Now, in this... Um, in this... Uh, um, chapter, we, be, we get... Uh, a lot of um, examples for misdirection. I'm not going into each and every one of them, uh, but they are basically um, displaying just this moment where the attention of the onlookers gets directed to 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 certain momentum, and this is the place where the dirty work is done. Now, Hugard and Bruyere mentioned that um, the whole thing, the whole technique, of course, for stage illusions. Right, even for parlor illusions, I would say, is uh, differs quite a lot from a close-up situation. Not so much in the general approach or in what it is that you do when you misdirect attention, but in the in the um, in a, in a, um, in, a, in the distance of it. So, of course, the closer we are. Uh, the more narrow the field is, the field of sight, and the um, shorter the interval of the interaction uh, of the misdirection might get, right? So, for example, the first example we got here from um, um, from a stage illusion where a, a beer, um, an, an actual beer, would appear on a on a stage um, and maybe dance or whatever would misdirect the uh, audience uh, away from the magician, you know, leaving the stage and um, setting, him, uh, setting, uh, setting himself up with a double, with a double, right? So when people look back, now there's a double on stage with a little shady light, probably that, this is how they make this work. And then, you know, you can make the magician disappear and so on. And the thing here is for me, this kind of misdirection, you know, we're talking about this really, you know, um, straightforward um, don't misdirection. Don't take your eyes off the spoon. Oh, there it goes. Look there. Like a flash disappears. And I love, um, by the way, there's this ma ma magic, uh, amazing Jonathan here who who, uh, who um, put this uh, uh, joke into his act. I guess uh, he performed this for a long time. Um points this out it's kind of silly and if it is done in um a you know lazy way it can create exactly this um uh, th th this uh, uh, experience um especially if you do something like this something flashy you know in a, a close up situation um where you what um bring too much attention to something that doesn't really make sense. And then when you come back to your deck or something and the card has changed or the deck has changed, this is not gonna re this is not really gonna work. Um, however, uh, what is true is that if you manage to um, get to grasp the attention of your onlookers to a, a, a certain moment where um, they are focusing on for that um, moment in time, they are not able to see pretty much everything that's going 
on a round, even in, and this is so crazy about it, in a really um, narrow field of perception. Like, so basically they can look at the table and then when they look to the, just a little to the left on an object on the table or something, you can do a lot of things, right? This is the classical, let me just give you a little example here on the card table. When we have this, um, oh yeah, I wanted to watch with you also Leonard Green, guys. When we have this um, Leonard Green um, thing or anything that, that's uh, been hidden in, in the hand, let's take a bunch of cards here. Let's work with this one. Now this is just here, um, a very, a very trashy example, but you know this, maybe you have, you, you have seen this, I can't really do this, but just to give you the example. So I'm, the cards, they disappear within this dealing action and then the left hand comes to right hand and everything's clear, right? Something like this. So in this small scape, um, just this, this um, and you've, you've seen this so often, right? A, a, a magician just, you know, pretending to, to clean the table and thus the, the hand goes away. It's little things like this who do th that work on a table. And if they are performed in a fluent manner, in a constant flow of motion, they actually really do, um, do the job. So there is no music in the background here. Thank you so much, Herr Logi, for your great music. So let's go here to um, the uh, um, uh, uh, royalty-free planet and listen to some synthy wave in the background. So I just realized I went full throttle here into the material. Um, Ruski Nelson says, um, Herr Logi, misdirection is one of the strongest tools we have. It is not only just one of the strongest tools we have, it is an, um, a necessary ingredient. You, you're not getting, uh, you, you're not, you, you can't do magic without it. It's part of the, it's part of it. It's, it, it's, uh, it's, it's an, an essential element of its nature. I would assume they don't go into mental misdirection because back in their times, mental misdirection was seen as a holy secret. Only the experts or expert would know and share. Hmm. This depends. I don't, I, I, quite frankly speaking, or quite honestly speaking, I don't have that much knowledge um, about the history of magic. This, of course, could be. It could be uh, something um, uh, they... <sighs> But but maybe not. Maybe it would you know it would just take a very different approach. And this is a book which focuses on sleight of hand techniques. Also, there is the chapter following on presentation where a lot of elements that you could you know sum up or just uh, work uh, uh, um, under misdirection. So they just, I believe it's more a methodological um, uh, decision they made here, just to focus on this, you know, um, uh, pointing uh, or shifting the direction. I've never liked them term mister uh, like the term misdirection nine times out of ten you probably still get away with doing the slide without needing to purposefully draw attention away. Shigan says, misdirection is better thought of as an reinforcing the current focus point rather than trying to hide something else. This is a nice take. Um, it is, um, yeah. it is not so much about, you know, getting away with the slide or hiding something. I agree with this. It is about, and, um, about, um, creating a, um, a, a, a meaningful, um, flow of pictures, an experience that makes sense, but that um, um, still enables you to um, to do your dirty work, right? And, and that's just the, the, the basic, basic what do you say, um, uh, uh, definition of, of the art form. And that's why there is so many um, uh, uh, strong opinions about it out there, right? Um, you cannot go without it, but if you put too much um, uh, weight onto it, it becomes quite the opposite, right? And then it, you can turn this even comedic, li like like uh, like I sh uh, wanted to display with the meme, yeah? Let me play the meme again here. Don't miss it, don't take your eyes off the spoon. Oh, there it goes, look there! Crazy Chang is like, uh, uh, in my opinion, they kind of uh, contradict themselves. They specifically use the word arouse rather than control or distract, which would suggest that it's more of a minimal misdirection body language thing. Um, 
Ja, ja, okay. Um, maybe contradict us a little bit too strong, but um, for me, it was, I was really wondering about why would they make this strong distinction here and why would they just go f focus this specific aspect? And the more I thought about it, the more it became, uh, it, it made sense to me because um, you need to understand uh, the purpose of directing the attention of the audience and you need to understand the specific moment of where you guide it away from what you are doing as a sp specific moment within you guiding the attention of your audience all the time anyway. It's not that they are free to um, think and see what they want to see up until you point them into the wrong direction. <laughs> you are directing their attention all the time and great design of and a great design of misdirection just guides them naturally to the moment of being occupied in their minds with whatever it is where you guided them to giving you the window of opportunity and that's what I always called it to do your dirty work so who got in Bray they are um, quoting here Robert Houdin, Secrets of Conjuring and Magic. I don't know when that was published. I didn't look it up, but there, you know, it's, it's not a big deal. You got the book, guys, you can look it up. They quote here, Houdin, saying some actions and movements of the performer are designed solely to facilitate, facilitate what in Conjuring is called a tom. Temps, from, from, I believe that comes from French. T-E-M-P-S, tom. A tomb is uh, the opportune moment for affecting a given disappearance or the like unknown to the spectators. In this case, the act or movement which constitute the tomb is specially designed to divert the attention of the spectators to some point more or less remote from that which the trick is actually worked. So, tombs. The Now, Hugarin Bure, they kind of... Um, translate Tom itself as misdirection. Uh, for me, is the, the term Houdin uses Tom basically the consequence out of misdirection. Um, but it's not something, uh, it's something that only the magician um, knows it's there and knows or created to use it. It's something that is out of the side, out of sight out of perception, out of realization for everybody else who is, who is watching the performance. And as a matter of fact, in preparation for this live session, I watched a lot of magic, but which I which I usually don't do because it's um, uh, it's it's exhausting to me. It is. I, I learned this really nice word. What what is it? Exasperating. Exasperating. <laughs> You know, because I'm very folk, I, 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 I just have to make a decision. How do I watch, watch the magic? Do I just le lean back and just, do I just, you know, um, enjoy the illusion, or do I just, you know, um, sitting there like a, like a, like a sharp bulldog, you know, like where, 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 to, to work it out in my brain what's actually happening, and it's really exhausting because if a performer worked his piece well. Um, got his routine really down and got a lot of experience, you're watching this and you, you're going to be fooled anyway. That's the beauty of it. Because it works, because you cannot help it, right? And um, nowadays we have the opportunity to look back, you know, we watch something and we're going to do this in a second. We're going to watch David Blaine today together and we're going to watch um, uh, Daryl on the Chicago opener because, um, yeah, gonna t anyways, um, you can, you know, rewind, basically. You could you could never do this before in time. So you would just be, you know, from a, a high profile or a, a well-performing magician would just blow your mind away and you just couldn't help it. And you would need, you know, to go to the magic uh, gathering. You would need to go to the table and there would be like the professor types, those who know everything, the, the gatekeepers of the Holy Grail, of the secrets of magic and, you know, uh, I don't know, you know, uh, almost like a religion, you know, and, and then you would, you know, 
work hard, really hard to to get the insights to get the info and today if you read something like this if you study magic like we do and then you watch those performers you can rewind and you can see ex ex exactly where it works or how it works the crazy thing though it's it's still working in the sense of your brain is just processing it this way you cannot help it and that's what i meant when i when 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 i started this with um cognitive capacities right this is just what we're working with and if you understand that this really works like this um for example for example ob object permanence you may have heard about it so i have works really well with red balls right i have a red ball in my hand and then i i toss it and i catch it with my uh, i toss it invisible invisibly let me try this let me get some red balls here So now I have, I have to, <laughs> and this is just, it's not a trick. It's not a, what did I do here? It's not meant. It's not meant as a trick performance. Now it's an ex example of, of how it works. So you now you know, now I gave your, your brain the idea of having two balls. Now, if you don't have this idea and you give it a little time, and then it's eradicated. Now I show you a red ball and I toss it in the air and I catch it with the other hand. You see what's happening? And it, there was even no timing, it was nothing. You almost have to, you know, you have to tell your brain, I know there is another ball in the hand, right? So I throw it up and I catch it with the other hand. And your brain just make, you say, they, it, it suggests it's the same freaking ball. Shit like that. Now, of course, if it's, the, f the funny thing is I see it myself when I do it, it's so stupid. Um, and this is what we harvest. Now, of course, to make the illusion, illusion really work, you, um, you have to bring timing, you have to simulate the, really the, the, of what it would look like, how the ball would fall invisibly. The brain goes with that automatically because that is what we have kind of, you know, um, memorized. Now, imagine somebody doesn't know about multiple blows in the game and the overall flow of motion is so natural that it does not suggest this is happening and the timing of the transfer goes down you got you got your you got your magic going on you got you start um doing what it what it is in magic i have this problem here that i'm uh, i'm not getting so I have this I have this one ball and I throw it into my right hand, right? Left hand. I've got this one ball and I can throw it into the other hand. And I throw it and I throw it and I throw it and I throw it, right? What do you see? Do you see me throwing a ball from one hand to another, right? And you know that I'm not doing that. And that's 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 one of the elements you're working with when you're working with misdirection. For example, and the, the thing about it is that it is always a blend between the theoretic, the theoretical aspect and the practical aspect. <laughs> you just gotta, you just gotta, uh, um, uh, gotta, uh, just got to get a feel for it. Don't miss it. Don't take your eyes off the spoon. Oh, there it goes. Look there. Now, another thing I want to point out before I want to go with you into the, um, into the, um, the examples, into uh, taking a look at, at pro magicians working, is what they say at the end of this chapter, which is so beautiful. They say, the principle of misdirection, wait, wait here, here, it's here, it's here. Um, like, Cardini or any other uh, master of the art may uh, secure perfect misdirection by allowing his monocle to drop from his eye, concentrating audience interest upon the monocle and its replacement as the suave deceiver quietly secures billiard balls, cards or cigarettes with the other hand. But few of us can wear monocles and none of us can duplicate Cardini's superbly characterized Enoid man about town. 
Strive rather to create misdirection, which will be individually your own, a product of your own thought. No one can use it so effectively as you. Now, the, th this really rocks the boat here when you think about it. We are talking basically uh, uh, about a um, uh, fundamental technique and practice in magic, which works because humans are alike in the are alike to a certain de this degree in the perception of the world when it comes to root roots experience you know um, following objects following reason um, um, measuring distances and and um, and uh, values in numbers quantities but yet again we should make this our own How does that work? What does that mean? When, when I think about it, it's like there is something it ha they haven't really touched here in this chapter, and that is the social interaction of uh, that comes with every performance of magic. Now, and the social interaction is something where the natural language of the body plays an in, in, in intense and immense role. Right? It's really, really important. Now, if that doesn't come across natural, being the real person, um, you will have a harder time than actually being the real person, being natural. It's just a side thought that, um, that I had while I was reading this, um, this really interesting chapter here. Of course, when you think about what it is that um, um, grasps or that um, um, gets the attention of people, then we are, of course, talking about an emotional impact. We're talking about something like empathy. We have here in the book the example of a magician working with a child and um, this um, interaction between... Um, um, how do they write it here? It is known that this is an exciting moment in the boy's life and it watches to see how he will react. In lifting the magician tails, he has acted with amusing audacity. So um, you say there's a child on stage or you bring somebody on stage and the people there are em emphatic with the person. So they like a lot because of that, there's a lot of attention to that person, which is uh, something stage magicians work with or even close up or parlor uh, guys can work with. You know, you know, as soon as you are getting inter interactive with people, um, The attend there's a, 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 all of a sudden there is a lot more to process in the brain of your onlookers than uh, than they would have if they would only look at your hands, right? So, for example, and I believe they already they also have this in the in the book here, uh, and you've probably seen this doing this thing. But the performer says to some spectator, "Give me your hand," and the performer gives the hand. Now put it the other way around, and they start playing this game with the hand, how to hold the hand properly. You know this thing where who got embroy right this kind of um uh, catches also now uh, 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 the attention of the analogs now that it begs the question why is it important that the hand is held like this and people are looking at the hand they want to follow uh, along what what is going on there which gives a lot of space a lot of window of a, a opportunity a lot of toms to um to i don't know do whatever it is you need to do or you want to do in that specific moment but once again here we are dealing under this general term of human interest. But there, of course, is so much more to it because it's not only the interest um, which makes uh, misdirection work. The interest is one thing. Of course, it, there needs to be an interest in, in, in go going with your eyes or with your ears or with your thoughts in one direction. But in order for it to, to work, it, there needs to be a reason for this. It needs to be logical. You cannot um, just, you know... Um, divert the attention by you know having something blowing up in the back this is not working the, the brain is not buying it but if it, you if you give this a reason if there's a reason and they call it i believe in the book here some logical stimuli if you give this a lot logical stimuli in there um this thing starts working and overall
And overall, and at the end, a good misdirection does not leave any memory of itself in the heads of the onlookers. It does not leave any memory of itself in the minds of the onlookers. There is no, ah, oh, wait, there was this moment when, you know, uh, big fireworks came and after that there was an elephant on the stage. It, that, that's not how it works. That, of course, ruins the illusion. So, good misdirection, it leaves no trace in the head of the, um, of the onlookers because they would go with their attention to that place because of a natural interest which was a logical stimuli which had reason within the within the or which the brain could process as a reasonable follow or catching up with the events occurring and then it starts moving it starts working the illusion starts to to appear to happen only in the minds of the onlookers and this is maybe one of the things that that's for me the hardest part in magic is that i can't that i can't see my own magic you know because my point of view and my working of the illusion is of course the working of the illusion i'm the puppeteer you know i'm playing the character i have my routine set up i put everything in place and then comes the moment of the illusion and i really have to cherish i really have to embrace all my empathy to kind of experience the magic through the eyes of my onlookers <laughs> right I'm not there to fool them. Basically, I'm there to to experience the magic <laughs> again. <laughs> so, guys, I have not looked up what's uh, what's going on. How many are following here with me? I'm just, you know, right now getting it out out there. I hope you have a blast of a time. I hope you're practicing cards while I'm um, while I'm speaking. Making it quality time for yourselves. Quality, quality times for yourself. One thing just for, comes to my mind. For all you odd maniacs who make everything happening on my YouTube channel with a pledge on Patreon. Guys, I just... Um, Don't I miss just, it. Don't um, take Yeah, there we go again. Oh, Amazing job. Look, look there. It's where it happened. Here. Um, I've just um, um, uploaded um, or shared here this very um link it's our first exclusive live jam which is going to go down uh 7th of july right so everybody who's a follow, follow, who, who, who is a patreon of mine uh, should see the um and have access to the um unlinked um link for, on youtube so uh, so that you can set reminder for that right and hopefully get some a, a reminder there and then you can watch it on on youtube or you can watch it Or take part um, here on on Patreon, and I'm planning to do this with a um, video conference call thing. It, it's uh, on Discord, right? It's going to be total anarchy, um, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Just that you know, guys. And once again, thank you so much for your support because without you, none of this would be going down, right? You are rocking amazing. So let's now. I'm curious who's how, how many folks are with me. Let's see. Have watched at the analytics. 20 people watching right now. That's amazing. Everybody watching. Everybody listening. Everybody, you know, trying to follow properly. It's great you're here. We we we're just. I don't know what's going on with time. We're just doing this for 30 minutes. It feels like I'm talking for two hours. <laughs> And. It's just like the last two weeks, you know, because last session we did last two weeks. Every two weeks, just going down. And it was a, it was an eternity. I, I don't know what happened. It, it just was an eternity. Okay, now now let's go. Let's let now let's go to the real deal. Let's 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 um. 7th of July is in the agenda. That's that's amazing. Amazing. Great, 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 great. And it's going to be... We're going to do this to, to totally free. You know, you come up with whatever you come up with. We talk about everything completely. It's just uh, it's got just going to be uh, you and us. And um, it's going to be a great, a great session. So, so, so... Um, 
I wanna. And for, by the way, for everybody tuning in, maybe not uh, uh, knowing um, how how I'm working or what this channel is about, is I'm focused on on, on close up and parlor card magic, uh, side of hand based card magic, and I have a lot of tutorial series up and running on my channel. And we are now getting uh, deeper into the material, into the uh, um, um, studies of the art form, analyzing tricks also. And you will find for every video, every tutorial, follow up uh, videos uh, or stuff that went down pr previously. And everything is always linked in the info cards right there and also in the info box. Just that you know, it's all out there for you. A lot of material. Um, now. We the, the, the last thing we did, we, we I would um, I would sh uh, come up with a uh, over the dose performance of a uh, um, super um, cardistry style with super uh, uh, way too many moves on the Chicago opener, Red Hot Mama, world's best card trick. You remember that? And I did a tutorial series where I uh, put all the tutorials in order you would need to basically perform that. Um, confronting a novice of the art with 12 basic um, fundamental techniques of card magic just to do this um, uh, um, classic feat of card magic. And then I did a follow-up video where I would explain or where I would compare my over-the-top version with the um, with the standard or the classic version of this feat, which has been um, performed, made famous and taught by Daryl, you know, the magician's magician Daryl. And I want to um, just talk a little bit about the hot zone, the hot spot of this trick. Right there in the center of the attention of the audience, you need to pull of a, pull of a double lift, double turn over. And um, I want to take a look at Daryl's version right now. And be f so let's watch this first. I'm going I'm, I bring the music down. Let's watch this first. And then um, uh, so I gotta go Don't here. Don't miss it. Don't take your eyes uh. off the spoon. Oh, there it goes. Look there. Yeah, misdirection. And the battery is overheating. We are a summer again, so I don't need it right now. I hope this is um, big enough for you guys. I need to turn the volume up. I hope um, we're in the performance here. Um, yes, it's very much the beginning of the performance. Yeah, he was he, he was one of a kind. Let's just just take a look at the performance. Anyone will be fine. You know, I'm Ooh, just. One. Resuming, you know the trick. We, uh, you guys know the trick, so I talk over it. We got a card selection, right? And then if you were Shown to everybody, very important. The deck, just call out stop wherever you'd like to right, we bury that card with the over uh, with the Hindu shuffle. Perfect. At any point, perfect. There it goes, done. But not forgotten. Yeah. What I have to do is pass the hands over the Magical board. gesture. One card will change color. One. Just like that, it's done. So they're all red on the back side, except for one card. No. Ooh. That, this is the f hot and you song. Know what? That's the only card that changed color. Now, any card could have changed color, but only one specific card actually made the change. What was the card you selected? Jack of Clubs. Jack of Clubs, that's all there is to it. It works every time. So, that, that's, the, that's the hot zone, right? Now, first thing I want to point off, um, why is this so seemingly? Why is this so, why does this go down so smoothly? Because Daryl is under control of the attention of the audience all the time. By 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 saying this, I mean he is navigating, he is um, managing what is important right now or what is not, and everything else he does is natural to it. There is no interruption. You 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 don't. There is no moment where you would wonder like why would he do that? Like only if you know what the problem is he is solving there, um, you will find you will start wondering only if you really start like a magician. Because and this is what I um, what I actually only realized because I came up with this um, um, uh, over the top version, right? Because we have here in this situation where we have the, the where we where, where we have the display of the card, we have the effect presented. Now we get to get to a double there, but why would you? Why would you hide that card at that point once again? What he does, he brings the card back together. Right, so he does this with kind of a sucker move, um, a sucker move in the sense that he is closing the, um, uh, that he's um, showing the cards in this manner, closing the deck again, 
opening it with a spread to close it again and then to open it with a uh, with a um in head spread again okay that's that, this might be a little bit too confusing here show you this one more time we show the effect all red on the back side except for one card no one card changed now he closes this again Ooh. and you know and he shows it again what that's the only card that and the reason for this or that what gives it cover if you would you know start thinking about it which you don't do as an audience member if you don't know what's going on because it it's all so smooth the reason for that is like you know you know when you find it it's more like this when you find it that's the thought process here that's like it's really confusing because and then he shows all the cards to give in, to give display of all the cards because this is the only one card right he, this is giving reason to this what he's doing which is a preparation for the next move changed color now any card could have changed color but only one specific card to repeat the same motion like he closes this again and repeats the same motion and he reflects on the rep repetition by repeating what he says now this is really really cleverly thought through in the situation now card actually made here comes the misdirection did you see it that was the misdirection we are talking about in a um parlor situation or close-up situation like that look at this again the specific card actually made the change what that is the misdirection did you see it once again made the change what that is the misdirection did you see it now it's not only the the it is two elements at the same time and you can kind of see it here really really well in this uh, uh, um, uh, uh, um, still frame his attention is completely a hundred percent with the audience with the onlooker and he is addressing the onlooker with a question i believe what was the card you've been selected right and this is where it happens. Now let me let me break this down. Let me show you this here on, on my table to, to give to, to this. Just to give you an idea how subtle this, this stuff is. So we have a display and I just take here any blue card, that really doesn't matter, in the center. So I go and I show the card, it's there. I close it again, I, or the performer, shows all the cards and he gives reason to this with that what you say what he speaks and you know in the chapter of the here of the book we're actually talking about to exclude to exclude this from misdirection you know the 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 the, the, the audience management audience man management or the, the 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 navigation of the thought process of the audience with what you say it is it's hardly to separate from each other right um we have the reason to see it's all, only one card change right so so that is that is what the brain accepts or why shouldn't it accept it because it 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 um can evaluate this what it hears with what it sees now here comes the moment and you can see here now um uh that i show the cards i show the card right and then at the my attention is down and the attention is down the card it's only one card or whatever it is and here comes the misdirection it's two things at the same time first my attention goes up and i put the other cards onto the table at the same moment now naturally this motion towards the, the spectator is a stronger motion than those going back those cards going back and lifting the head up to address the onlooker placing it in almost makes this moment of bringing the cards in um insignificant it the brain kind of you know misses out on it it's no need for it because there's no there's no need for the validation of the information and even this placing the cards onto the table is almost not recognized it's stronger when you think about it but it is still very, very um, soft because the brain automatically knows with it is about this card or the focus lies on this card. So those need to go away. And this is what, what this moment is all about. And at the same time, now the magician or the center, the whole center of the, uh, the, of the action goes up and a question is addressed, which occupies the brain, kills everything down below.
it has more relevance. It's more important to follow what's going on. And no matter, you can, you know about it, you can know about things like that. It's just how it works. This is what your brain suggests. And so you follow along. And at that point, of course, we get into the pole position for the um, hardest move in the trick. Bang. This is how Daryl does this in this situation. And now for someone who is not playing it smooth like that, who is not, oh, I've got my monitor here. I'm always pointing to the monitor. So someone who's not playing it smooth like Daryl and who's, uh, um, who's worked his way up to, you know, be in such a um, um, civilized environment, <laughs> um, I, I would never work that clean. I just go. I just go for my favorite one. You know, oh man. I just, you know, I I just show the card like this. Bang! Was it your card? This card? Why? 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 And I place back on there as soon as possible. You know, I don't make any any fuss. You know, one card with one snap, and I just wave the card. I believe you could um, even see in the in the in the um, explanation of performance in the follow-up video um you can see when if you watch carefully you can see the flash of the of the double you know never never mind <laughs> that doesn't really matter at this point so one more time here daryl now that I've, I've showed you and the point here is the misdirection it's just what i want to point out and i think it is it is you know it's just one moment we are we are focusing on but a well-designed routine Look at all these great Penn and Teller things, the cups and balls, of the visible cups and, cups and balls by Penn and Teller. Or they have this um, the, uh, cigarette routine where they talk about misdirection. It's beautiful what they do. It's so beautiful. It just works. You know, they, they tell you basically exactly what they're doing and you're still going like, wow. And at the point where they really want to rock you, they, of course, not tell you what to do. <laughs> so one more time. And it's one more, and it's really important at this at this moment, in this moment, for me to point out to you guys. This is not about I don't know debunking someone and saying uh, this uh, um, uh, double sucks, but it's detectable. But it's quite the opposite. I'm using this example because it is so good, because it is absolutely brilliant and perfect and it's just because i know what i do it because i'm studying it because you're studying it important to understand what the misdirection does what it is that makes it work what it is why it's so beautiful if you give it a break if you loosen your brain if you stop thinking about it and you watch the whole thing from beginning to end you will go through this you will just fall. you will fall you will fall at that point like everybody because it's so well played we want to look something even better in a second just let's take a look at this so it's not about debunking, you know, just revealing, say it's really about understanding what misdirection is and why Daryl is one of the best of the best of the freaking best because he knows how to do this with, without without any hesitation, do you know? It's just, I, it's just perfect. So let's go there, look one more time for this moment. Pass the hands over the pack. Believe it or not, one card will change color. Just like that, it's done. So they're all red on the back side, except for one card now. Ooh. And you know what? That's the only card that changed color. Now, any card could have changed color, but only one specific card actually made the change. What was the card you selected? Jack of clubs. Jack of clubs, that's all there is to it. Works every time. <laughs> it's all that there's to it. It works every time. Tom's, right, right, and you see how so, um, here, a night uh, Skyrim, right? Your, your, your bottle was invisible on green screen. Yes, yes, I'm drinking the inv inv invisible um, Heineken. Toms, um, it is, we are talking about um, something microscopic, uh, mi microscopically small. We were talking about um, um, f in card magic uh, and in sleight of hand um, based on. Um, um, uh, close-up magic about fractions of a second and the thing is the misunderstanding I you find so often in magic is that you would think that you're better off by speeding through so you very often see performers speeding up to the point where they want to navigate through with their misdirection. 
And it's the opposite is happening. Naturally, you can feel that. There should not be any, you know, um, interruption, any break, any pattern, of course. It should be smooth, but it shouldn't it not, not be fast and it should not be shifting in uh, in the speed of the of the of the um of the whole motion except for there is a reason you know um and by the way this is another aspect i just want to um to point out here um and um so let's let's go back to the book here and read uh, one more little thing and by the way i've got some affiliated links down in the info cards uh, info box in case you don't have the book already and you want to get there it's really 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 helpful if you do read the stuff yourself really it, it's just something i just experienced this yesterday i i um read this yesterday the second time and today the third time and then probably it's the fifth time i read this chapter um f in preparation not three times in preparation for the session and two times before in my own studies um for my own studies um and it's always there there's always you know it just you know sets a, a, a train of thoughts into motion you know, and uh, maybe you 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 find nuances. Maybe you get new ideas. Maybe you remember something. It's really, 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 really. Uh, um, uh, there is no way around reading if you wanna. If there's no way around reading, if you wanna get anywhere, if you want to get anywhere in life, except for being a puppet in the mainstream media. <laughs> um. So 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 so. Here's what I wanna read. Um, and uh, by the way, I'm reading, I'm, I'm reading really, really not enough in my life. I have to, I have to, to, um, to, uh, to read more. It's a shame. I'm doing, I'm just, I'm just, just so much time management. My time management sucks. So, um, misdirection can be built into the presentation of a card trick almost at will once a real understanding of its principles is had. This takes thought, more thought and still more thought. And after the misdirection has been conceived, it must be tested before audiences to determine to, uh, to determine its effectiveness. But once a good misdirective device has been evolved, it is yours for all time and will be as effective 10 years hence as it is with, with when first created. The very best conjurers, the ones who are esteemed by the general public, are the ones who have constructed their presentations so that at the moment when the secret slide is made, some logical stimuli will be presented which will interest and divert the spectator's attention. They have been willing to devote the sometimes exasperating thought to the problem of misdirection, knowing that the rewards are great. On the other hand, many card conjurers, especially in presenting intimate card feeds, trust to luck that his misdirection will be good. He never performs the same feat in the same manner twice in succession. He relies upon an opportune moment to provide the misdirection which he needs and more often than not this moment does not materialize. So there is a different style here. Just by the way, I just want to mention, you can, and there's, let's put it very very straightforward, like a, um, uh, a a routine and strict, strictly routine act where you hardly go into any um, um, improvisation compared to a um, anarchistic freestyle jazz jazzy approach where you basically go into the whole set like yeah hey, what the fuck let's try this let's try this let's go there and i don't care when i pull up but i don't care when i switch the deck we would see when it happens right I, I, you're going along here's the thing the the set the, the the um uh, both versions or both styles can be performed on very different uh, levels um and sometimes it is, and it doesn't really depend really on your skill level. It depends on um, on where you're at, basically, in your learning process. Sometimes it's really better to just, you know, let go and groove at the situation and be really spontaneous or just to get the experience or to, to loosen up because, you know, it's really cringy if you got this guy who's, you can't, who, who doesn't get a natural interaction with, with the audience, especially if it's one-on-one -on -one or really close because he needs to stay with his pattern otherwise he doesn't know where to you know uh pull the pass off 
um, which you shouldn't do anyways because um, uh, uh, you, you can't do it when you're stressed out about it, right? And then on the other hand, you know, if you go into completely jazzy, you just might just end up throwing the cards around like no place. And today, I want the next thing I want to show you uh, to you guys, or I want to talk about with you guys, and I hope this does not get this stream later on when it's uploaded um, blocked um, because it's a, uh, a TV performance for David Blaine on the Jimmy Fallon show. And I all, once I did a video where I wanted to, you know, um, analyze this um, and it got blocked worldwide because of copyright issues since, and which is a shame because this falls under fair use and basically, and I'm not ruining anything here. I will not. Um, go in detail into um, the secret or into the uh, method of exactly how David Plaint pulls it off <laughs> um, because that's just not um, uh, it's not the right thing to do there's no need for it for what um, we are studying today that is misdirection we're going however to see how um precise misdirection can be and we have in this situation here in my opinion the perfect blend between a performer who um a performer who um follows a um very thoroughly cleverly crafted and designed routine but yet manages in the right moments to let or they are. It's even designed in a manner that he has to that ha that he has the time, um, or the opportunity to let loose to create this nuance of complete, uh, easy going, complete natural, complete um, um, improvised um, happening. Actually, um, we're talking about three cards across. And before we watch what David, how, how it looks like on a high-end level of David Plain and um, in my opinion this is one of the this is one of the best performances of magic um, last century easy like um, it is a three phase uh, it's a four phase act of three or is it five four or five phase act of um, four or three um, classic, classic feats of parlor card magic that have been re redesigned by David Blaine in a manner that they just are so brutal. There is no. I was. I. I was. I was stunned when I first saw it, and I still am. And then I was so into the card magic, because that's my thing. When he spat out the frog, he caught me completely off guard, and he gave me an experience I thought I was not, I was not capable of having anymore, because I know shit, right? <laughs> Especially I know about all the endless stuff out there I have no freaking clue about that even exists so I never thought anybody uh, going out on a TV show could just you know blow my mind in a manner that I'm going like what the fuck and he did that with this <laughs> bullshit frog spitting stunt just because I was so in in the cards you know, I was there with the books. Like, that's that, that was die worn and let way. I know where, 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 where did he shift that? Where, where, where? I just, <laughs> uh, uh, like a S Salvini, you know, trying to figure out what Mozart was doing, like, like, the, like that level. And then he spits out a frog and swallows it again. And I was like, fuck this guy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now I've teased you enough for the thing. Um, um, mm. 
You have, for instance, pawned cards from a packet of 15 while performing the three cards across. And at the moment that the palm is made, you request spectator A to hand the pack to spectator B on your left. The palm is completely covered since the spectators watch the pack of cards as it passes from assistant to assistant. You, you hand the pack of cards first dealt, minus the palm cards to spectator A, and later the onlookers claim that they kept their eyes on the, this packet every moment and that it contained the entire 15 cards first dealt. You request spectator B to deal 15 cards onto your extended left hand and every eye in the audience watches the deal as the spectators count the cards one by one to make certain that no more than 15 are dealt. They have been interested in the accuracy of the deal and you have misdirected their attention from the right hand which holds the palm cards sounds easy doesn't it let's watch they blame at work oh yeah i want you to count out i want you to count out loud for me we're going to use 10 cards my heart is beating okay. this is just so let's count out loud one, one, two, two three, three, four, five, six, six seven, eight, eight, nine, ten. Ten cards, no more than ten. Mm -hmm. For this, we don't care about the number in the suit. We only care about the actual paper that makes the card. Mm -hmm. Ten cards, correct? Correct. Mm -hmm. Yes? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Nobody's skeptical. Yeah, but I th it's ten cards. No, I'm saying if you're skeptical, <laughs> then you do the count yourself. Here, look, feel it. Make okay. sure that's one card. One card. No, no, here, and then put it upside down on the bottom, okay. like a real count. Okay. That's One, number two, two, right? Good. Keep going out loud. Th three. three. And on the bottom, yeah. Four. Four. Five. five six, six. Seven. seven eight. eight nine. Ten cards. Ten. Can you hold them against your heart for me? Absolutely. Oh, yeah, good. Just like that. And keep your hand there. <laughs> oh, God. Just as I go through, and you can see they're all different, right? Mm -hmm. As I go through, I just want you to just yell, stop, it doesn't matter. Stop. Here? Yeah. Look at the card. See what it is. What number? We only care about the number. Can I what tell it? everybody? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Three. It's a three? Three. It Fine. is a three. It doesn't matter. You have ten cards. <laughs> you want three to travel from here to there. Three cards will move from this to your pile. Look. One oh. card just shot through there and landed on yeah, your pile. Yeah, I felt something. <laughs> Number two just traveled through the air and landed in this pile. Hold on, one more. Three cards just traveled through the air and landed on his pile. What I want you to do is you're going to count one, two, three, four, five, six. Count, there's no longer 10 cards. You now have 13 cards. Count them out loud right here for everybody. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten's the original number. How many there? Eleven, twelve. So at that point, I want to note out, we have the first effect here presented. We have the three cards that flew from the deck to the perform to the audience chest, right? And at this point, David is already set up for the second phase. He's done already. And this is absolutely brilliantly how he plays this timing, the misdirection, the complete pattern here and you see this breaks where he goes really um uh back and he goes like one three and this is all this you know this is the magician um playing out uh the 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 the, the experience of the magic happening the work is already done then the hard work and what i love about david blaine is that he's working that that he's that he's capable even in a studio situation like that with um with obviously the main audience being the people on television he managed to get this guys so into the thing that you really buy in it this is not a setup which which it's not it's a genuine card trick the experience you see it you can see it here you will watch it you have Everything you want as a performer at this point as a reaction. Look, this is amusement. This is wonder. This is excitement. 
the group is going bananas. It is just beautiful to see. And that's, of course, the, the that's now, the, now entering the second phase of the third trick in this four-phase uh, act altogether. But if you don't know this trick, and even if you know it, you should be wondering right now, where the fuck did, when did he, what the hell? You know, and I just read you basically the secret, the basic principle. There are many different ways of doing this, the different versions. This trick has been um, evolved over time. It is one of the greatest feats, uh, all time classic. It's just so beautiful, and you see the reactions. Anyways, I want to point this out. This man right here, you know, um, he's, he's he, he got he got it done, right? He got it done. And for me, I was when I f first saw it, it was like, wow, that is you can't do it better, you know. This 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 is where the bar is, dude. Um, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And you know, also I liked, um, and this is what we're gonna talk about in the next session, or um, we're gonna go back to the mechanics in the next session, and then in the session after that, we're going to talk about the next chapter, which follows this one here, the chapter, the presentation. We're, we're, we're going to talk about pr the whole aspect of presentation. Also, this here, the way of presentation, the way, uh, the way um, uh, uh, David blamed, it might not be everybody's piece of cake, but it's working definitely. It's working for him, as you can see. And the presentation, the way he, um, um, he um, addresses the different types of um, uh, ca uh, characters he, he's working here with, um, it's just beautiful to see. Because J Jimmy Fallon you know um, he, he is really so over the top um, he's so out of his mind he's actually one of those um, clowny characters you would love so who's excited who just wants to see the trick he's with you and he's if, but he's almost too much right and I love how David you know works with that and um, keeps keeps it keeps it under control and then shifts his attention to this beautiful interaction between these two guys you know between um uh, between here uh, him and the, and the guy who's holding the cards and then this reaction where he says i feel something you know it's just beautiful this is just you know this this works right the, the guys are with me they just want to do it you know they want the magic and that's a great situation of, of course um this um standing this um, openness of an audience comes, of course, with a reputation, you know, with a reputation that um, David Blaine ha has like no other uh, magician in the last century or had for a long time. Uh, you know, it's this this dude is going to it's going to be amazing, you know, so let's let's do it. You know, if you approach a, uh, a group as a nobi, you got to you, you will you will be, uh, be you, uh, you, you got to be lucky, you know, to get a group and to be so open like that. <laughs> <laughs> just saying so um let's uh, let's uh, keep on looking at that because um i just want to see the, the, uh, if there's something else happening here <laughs> oh my gosh oh. this is unbelievable oh, wait you know what take take all 13 <laughs> hold them against your heart for me <laughs> oh gosh yeah <laughs> can you can you uh and now you must see, there was now a long break for you guys. You got to rewatch this. By the way, links in the info cards. I linked this in the info cards as well as in the um, info box. There was a long break now. It was, it is still in the minds of the onlookers, the amount of cards here. You might lose the effect now, but I've been talking so much because they dealt the cards and it has been 13 cards, which was the miracle. So it was the miracle that 13 cards are lying on the table and all David says is take those cards. And the guy takes them and goes, like, he's doing this again. You understand the psychology of this? This is now beyond, imp this is now really getting getting out of control for a, um, uh, um, uh, for, for, for a normal brain. <laughs> now this is miracle uh, uh, above a miracle and nothing else happened. And people would um, later on probably go back, oh, but we went all totally crazy, you know? We went all totally crazy. Um, so he must have put sneak them in there somewhere later on. This is what people, the only chance they got to recall it. But we have the privilege to see the whole routine and it's working still for our, our eyes at the television because David has designed it also for that manner. It's just, you know, he's taken this to the next level so that it works for the group as well for the people on television. Um, and um, anyways, I've been talking a lot again, but just know for these people, for these minds, it it's 13 cards because that's a miracle right and um this is another aspect um who got in uh, right here in the book which i just uh, put um 
uh, or which I, I paraphrase here, which would be, and you find this on page um, 426 following, um, the effect sometimes can be utilized as a misdirection itself, right? However, this is not really true for the situation here, because the dirty work has already been done uh, under cover of another really, really beautiful misdirection. However, there is a time delay here. What David works here is that the, um, or maybe, maybe this is what the, the trick the, the design in general makes so strong. It is because it is this miracle. It is because the number 13 of cards is connected with the wonder, with that is what it is. And then nothing happens with the cards is, which makes it completely impossible that now there is a change in the number of cards again. Can you name a number up to 10? Three. Three? And can you name a number up to five? Uh, four. Okay, so four, hold on. Three for you and four for you. Yeah. I'm gonna move three cards for you and four cards for you into his pile of 13 from back here. There's three and there's four more. Now there's 20 cards, three plus four seven plus your 13. When you pull the pile off of your heart, you'll notice it's significantly bigger. Pull it off your heart. Does it feel bigger? <laughs> oh my God. See, there's no longer 13 cards. Count out loud for everybody. One, One two, two, three, three four, four, five, six, six seven, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. So we have um, we have uh, a beautiful, beautiful misdirection in this performance. And since we've talked about a lot about, I gave you some insight or some thoughts uh, how I'm approaching the whole topic on the basis of the chapter here. And then you watch uh, David Blaine. Um, it is just so so much fun and so exciting and this reaction of the guy counting the cards he starts street screaming while counting the cards because it's uncomprehensible it is completely out of this world uh, which is of course another trick but um it is just um it is just fantastic now i highly recommend you guys um with the knowledge you got from the book, and I believe in the Royal Road to Card Magic, we have the three cards, we have the cards across also explained. Go there, read this, study this, understand how it works, and then try for yourselves to figure out how David is doing it. When I realized it, I was shocked that I didn't see it beforehand. And I just wanted to give this for you guys uh, on the way. Um, because um, it, it it is the best it is the best lecture you can you can uh, get realizing for yourselves that this shit is freaking real it is working right and I believe this is uh, what they say here also if you once understand the principles and that they're working you can um, start um, working with them all right and you can start putting them into into your um, into your acts into your routines and and that is just that is just beautiful now I wrote something down one more thing about and let's put some uh, music here in the background again um, just a little bit I hope you could hear everything well I, why I don't hear any music? What is going on? That's weird. Do you guys hear any music in the background? Ah, now we are back on track. Uh, Nikki Dadich writes, Danny Durritt's nature is natural misdirection. Do you agree, sir? Yes, I agree. I agree. And um, the thing is that 
okay, let's just uh, when you uh, when you ask, you know, we could go now and um uh, and talk about Leonard Green, and we could go and talk about um uh, any uh, high stack performer, and it would be all the same. It's the same principle. It's the same techniques, but the difference lies in in the fact that those performers followed the advice. Um, if they if they if they read it or not to make the whole um, technique or to make the whole thing called misdirection their own create strive to create misdirection which will be individually your own a product of your own thought no one can use it so effectively effectively as you and of course addressing um, all beginners and novices of the art form G uh, well designed well crafted card tricks usually come with a good foundation for um, adding um, natural um, logical stimuli as misdirection in order to create tombs or as I call them windows of opportunity in order to give your dirty moves um, the cover they need and then there's one more thing that I want to read to you guys um, here with my um, little book um, this is just um, a little bit of a, of a mind you know a fart of mine um, which I um, produced uh, y yesterday thinking about David Blaine's performance and also what I read in the book uh, so this is, uh, this is just a, uh, 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 a random impression I, I decided to write down I wrote good misdirection is built into the whole seemingly natural occurring interaction between the performer and the audience the role the performer plays is the one of the performer itself. The performer therefore needs to remind the audience occasionally of him being the magician, though respectively because their overall interaction plays out seemingly so natural. Perfect misdirection is placed boldly in the center of the involvement of the audience before and after the magician plays his part within the heat of the moment he needs to disappear almost completely before and after the magician plays his part within the heat of the moment he needs to p uh, disappear almost completely and this is the this is what we saw here with David Blaine in such a beautiful manner. Um, we saw him being the magician, reminding everybody being the magician. He would um, uh, play it big, shoot the cards, you know, uh, with big gestures. But at the moment where, where the working is done, people are counting cards. <laughs> people are picking cards out of the deck and are interacting. So in the moment where you interact, you have to basically disappear, become invisible in the best case, because it's not just the slide that becomes invisible, it becomes everything that could have been done with the cards. In the best case scenario, every possible manipulation of the cards disappears as an option. And there is no, therefore, possibility for the brain to remember anything happening then when the work is done you come out as the magician the magician comes out and plays the magic right and um, this is kind of a overall thing that I've that you can find or you can see good performers having balanced out really really well um, or they just didn't care at all and they would make a living for themselves and a good name in the art in the scene uh, with their 
hilariously uh, funny and completely crazy over the top performances. Don't miss it. Don't take your eyes off the spoon. Oh, there it goes. Look there. Good, old, amazing, Jonathan. Uh, fantastic guy. Um, and um, great comedy magic. Love it. So, uh, Nick at the Daddy says, your channel is a real treasure. Man, if possible, please make a lesson, impression devices, and pre-show. Um, yeah, I don't, you know, uh, let's see, there's a lot. We are, first of all, I'm go we're going here through the expert car technique. Um, the route is already set. Um, make sure to hit double, comment, subscribe, notification bell icon to get notified or to get a higher chance to get notified for what's going on. There's also a link in the Discord for in uh, for a Discord channel where you can meet the odd maniacs, and um, uh, and then um, I keep uploading tutorials and everything uh, for now. Um, aha, for all book readers. So, um, guys, are you going? Cheers, guys. Chi Rob, hi Tim. I have to go. Chi Rob, uh, he's probably gone. Bye bye, Chi Rob. It was a blast of a time. I'm out of here too, probably about right now. Let's see what we got. Um, we got. Um, Currently 70 folks watching, um, um, and we did this for w about one hour and one minute. Now, I would be, you know, just repeating myself. I think I made the most important points I wanted to share with you guys um, uh, today. I mean, I mean, um, this is something uh, which, which, uh, which we will talk about um, very often in the future because as we pro process um, studying um, the um, art form of um, uh, card magic we will um, uh, uh, analyze the build the structure of tricks and by the way for everybody um, follow me for a long time now here this is the, the, the this, the, this is what's coming in the future we are not just revealing we're not just learning one trick um, after another trick, probably uh, you guys got your uh, uh, cupboards full with magic, with tricks. You don't need to know any other trick, but I'm going to be uh, very selective about some um, classic feats of magic that I'm going to um, analyze in its core structure, in its um, uh, main build, in its uh, uh, fundamental design uh, in order to gain an understanding of what it is what makes a card trick a good card trick. And what it is that makes uh, that 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 makes it fun for people also to to follow along a good card trick and to play along in the in the game the way we saw it today with David Blaine and we're going to um, uh, to to learn a lot about the different variations and the different and the many ways of how you can entertain an audience in a magical way with a deck of cards. You know, it is insane and. Um, uh, after years and the gates of studying the art form i still feel like i haven't really really started yet you know <laughs> sorry to ask is there a scheduled date for a manix exclusive video yes it is on the 7th of july i believe let me go, go there um um yeah 7th of july uh tuesday 7th of july 8 p.m as usual um uh, Berlin time GMT, GMT plus one um, and you will find the link uh, on Patreon um, uh, uh, available for Patreons of all tiers. So Grace Chatter says, yeah, I agree. Once you begin to repeat yourself, you lose the value of the gold nuggets you mentioned. A pretty good chapter gets started deeper into tricks and the book. That's how I view it too. I'm, I'm glad we are on the same page here with this one, Crazy Challengers. Um, I haven't been uh, reading in so much on your comments. Um, uh, forgive me, please. But you know how it is sometimes. I was really following my own thought process. And as a matter of the fact, I'm, I'm, I'm operating here on the edge of my abilities um, with the, the English language. I'm not, I'm not a native speaker. And this is actually um, a really um, uh, sophisticated topic. You know, that's just, a, that, uh, that's just as a side note. Um, that's it for me for now. 
Thank you so much, everybody. I had a blast of a time. Once again, thank you guys for supporting me with a pledge on Patreon. All you crazy maniacs, it is you who make it happen. Had a crazy time with the algorithm, with the, with the uh, uh, psychotic um, um, AI from YouTube. You know, I had a little bit of a, an up, you know, just to get slapped back to where I belong. You know? <laughs> but it doesn't matter because... Whoever finds the channel, whoever finds my workings on card magic and who is serious about studying the art form, um, uh, 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 usually uh, g g g gets through to me, let me know. Uh, is very happy with whatever he just uh, f found out about it new and then and then this is growing slowly. But for now, we are a cozy community and I'm really, really excited. Um, and I'm really, really happy with you guys, uh, uh, how, the, how, how you guys... Um, Uh, operating out there that's just fun to watch also what's going on um on, on discord you know um uh, really really cool um one more thing uh right there's going to be on patreon very soon this um the um it's just a story time here to get to close it um i just shot a video where inspired by you guys sharing videos of of your instruments mainly guitars on uh, in our discord channel I opened up my guitars for the longest time. I shot this, and I um um uh, uh I I gonna give a, a Patreon exclusive for all tiers out there. Um, uh, at Mary's best buddy, you know, sharing something of my private life and telling you a little bit about my my past as a musician. And after I did this, just yesterday, um. An old friend contacted me, but actually the drummer, the drummer of the, of my mo of my most beloved band I ever played with, a crazy guy, and he said that um, an original recording of one of our greatest concerts we ever played has uh, surfaced because he gave a copy to a friend, and the friend kept it, and now it resurfaced, and he digit digital. Uh, I, I'm not. I'm not managing to speak this word. He <laughs> listened to to the boomer speaking. He put it from tape into the computer. digitize digitize he digitized it he digitized it <laughs> right so um sooner or later uh, he, we're going to hear um the music i was playing with the guys um in the 90s that's gonna be freaking amazing looking forward to this um and uh, just as a side note this just happened the other day and this was like oh my god i thought this music was lost forever uh really great anyways That's it for me for now. Thank you so much. I had a blast of a time. You are rocking awesome. You know the drill, you know, click, 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 click. In the meantime, practice, practice hard, practice well, give it some time and it will come to you. And rest assured, more magical stuff is going to be uploaded very, very soon. Don't miss it. Don't take your eyes off the spoon. Oh, there it goes. Look. Odd Mario's magic. Like and subscribe. You are now listening to Halftime Decay by Dead Valley Pool Party. And please, Herr Logi, don't copyright claim this live stream because of me using your music.